I'm Yvonne Stout, and we are um, the residents here in Lehighton. And uh, we um, started this wall, the wall kind of uh, took on its own name. And so we had asked Rose Maria if she would paint for us because she's very talented and um, we wanted to give back to the community. And um, it was a rusty wall and not very attractive for the um, passersby on the DNL, uh, which is where it's located down past the bars in the DNL. And um, so we wanted to make it prettier. And so the original idea was just to have a rock wall and the walls started speaking to Cruz Maria and pictures started coming out into um, from her and God was speaking to her and so many of these pictures tell a story some from the Bible and some from others in the community um, which she will explain to you in a little bit um, this was put up by my father-in-law Robert Stout um, many many years ago 20 some years ago probably and um, with his wife Sharon Stout lived here for many years until he passed away and um, so we just wanted to give a, 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 find a way to give back to the community and um, honor my father-in-law and what he intended to do here and try to kind of finish his work that he began. So this is uh, basically a memorial to him and a gift to the town at the same time. Uh, Cruz Maria is so talented and so she's a friend from church, at Blue Mountain Community Church and um, you should see she's painting there as we speak. And she's so talented and um, I just wanted to be able to gift that to her as she gives that back to the community as well. So her talent is amazing. Oh, hi. Hi, I'm, I'm doing the, uh, the tubers and kayakers out there. It's a great day today. And uh, the wall means a lot to me because it gives me something to do. It keeps me busy. I like painting. And um, you know, when Yvonne asked me, I jumped at it because I hadn't painted in a long time. And um, I've been doing this since I'm a little girl. I didn't have lessons, but uh, God gave me the gift, so I use it and wherever I, I can and whoever asks me, here I am. So this I'm doing the kayakers, as I just said, and uh, sometimes the wall speaks to me and it kind of like gives me, um, I guess like a road map. And so I just go along with the with the lines sometimes I go to I clean out the brush and I do this and it come back the next day and I find that there's lines in there and I start following the lines and it tells me whoo this line is going here and so I use my imagination and follow the lines and lo and behold people start coming out some of these people are people that walk on the trail they're either with the dogs um, some of them have stories to tell. Many of them come just to get the exercise in. Um, the little pets, the riders, kayakers. This was one of those walls that I talk about when I just paint to clean the brush off. And when I come back the next day, I see lines. And so I follow the lines. And this one led me to like a mother and child and a tiger or a lion with the baby under its paw, an angel in between them, uh, people that uh, are, uh, what do you call, uh, for lack of a better word, disabled in one way or another. Uh, that angel is dedicated to a little boy that passed and for a while I didn't want to put hair on it and I didn't know why but I knew that it looked good without hair, so I just wanted it like that. And when I saw the father who asked me to see if I could do that, he showed me a picture and told me the reason why the angel didn't want any hair on it. And this is the father and his dog. Most of these people are, these are the kayakers. These are people that walk around, ride around, the writers, people going fishing with children. I come and I sketch it in. When I see it, I keep it in my mind. And then once I keep it in my mind, it stays there. When I come back, I look for a spot where it'll fit. And I put it there. This happens to be a friend from church that passed. 
and uh, the story behind this is kind of strange because she was her husband came here and he saw that picture and he said oh if her if she had lived long enough her and I would have been doing that because she was uh, you know disabled and so after she passed my girlfriend said well why don't you put her on the wall you know because I told her the story and she says I said okay so I started drawing her and she always wore a little hat and glasses and so I didn't want to put her on a wheelchair or anything so I put her on a little buggy I figured okay highway to heaven so I put her on the buggy and this hand she had it like this and it wouldn't move but it did move the gears of the bike so I figured okay you know the motor so I said okay I'll make a stick shift and she had that kind of personality that she looked like she belonged in the buggy well Come to find out, after I came back, about a week and a half later, Yvonne said to me, did you see Dave? And I said, no. I said, did you see, did he like the picture? Because he didn't know that it was for him. So she says, well, he's got a story. Do you know the story about the buggy? And I said, no. So they had this game between them about punch buggy. And so he felt that she was telling him, punch buggy, I win. <laughs> so. That's the story behind that one. These are the girls that pass by that they're going to school and they're training for running. Uh, this is my friend Tom. He passes by here. He spreads all the uh, flower seeds and, uh, you know, he has the, the night because we both work late at night, sometimes 10. He comes by, tells me the time to go home. An umbrella, of course, because you don't know when it's going to pour. And he carries this little go cart where he carries all his the stuff, he feeds the deer, he makes